very much, gentlemen. So, <clears throat> let me just... You're a live. <sighs> live from the fucking Space Hawk. We're killing Alex. <laughs> live Again. from not the Black Library. <laughs> Fuck that Eldar fucker. He's next. <laughs> <laughs> That's an Ultramar promise. I've already seen an art piece with my hat in it. I think this is going to be reality soon. I think it, it, we can talk about the art piece, but we can't show it. Like it would, it would defeat the purpose of, mm. of like no, putting it on the he's, screen. His now. head's going to be on the fucking Patreon thing because he's an idiot and is giving you money. No, he's not, he's he's not giving us enough money to put his head there. Um, yeah, oh, no. oh, sucks to suck, Alex. Oh. <laughs> you poor bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Ow. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Fucking hell, Red. God damn. What? I say, I say it how I see it. Be happy you're even getting a penny out of me. I've been on this podcast <laughs> multiple times for free. I mean, that's just good marketing. <laughs> I'm not getting paid for this. I, it's, I've, been kept a, I've been kept here for weeks. <laughs> they don't even feed me. Moose brings me food sometimes, that's nice, but red doesn't. Lick, lick, lick the condensation off the cell walls. <laughs> I didn't, we didn't bring you out of the prison cell to bitch. <laughs> oh my god. Alright? <laughs> Be lucky, some people don't even get skin here, alright? <laughs> yeah, I saw, okay, I saw Alex, Kono I'll... next door, I know. <laughs> It's okay, Alex. I'll, I'll sneak you an extra samula while the, the others aren't looking. Oh, please. It's going to be an extra what? It's going to be an orc a fucking mushroom samula now. A samula? It's a... Samula. Okay, wait. There's literally no English translation for it. That's it, amazing. There's a comic I saw a while ago <laughs> of like a, a really fucked up SpongeBob thing. Okay. Where like <laughs> they uncovered what Krabby Patty, Krabby Patties were, and it was the you know how starfish regenerate themselves when they get a limb cut off. Mm. Oh no! So no. apparently, like Patrick, oh, no. like accidentally, like got hit one of his hands cut off, right? And then Mr. Krabs grabbed it and it grew into a completely new Patrick. And then he's like, kept him inside his basement, feeding him growth hormones. <laughs> and the second clone Patrick and chopping no. off his limbs. Oh, no. oh my goodness. <laughs> and, oh, and, at one, and at one point, and at one point, a Krabby Patty gets undercooked and it turns into an, a third Patrick and they all go insane and start killing everybody. <laughs> what the fuck? You know so, what? I'm, like I'm that, good at myself. Like I'm good that, at myself. But with moose. <laughs> Right. <laughs> um, well, uh, f- fucking going back to Samula to avoid this conversation any further. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's loading very slowly, but uh, basically, it's um, it's a uh, it's a pastry that you're supposed to eat in preparation for the Easter the fasting. Ah, oh. um, I'll take it. And it's uh, it's a uh, sweet. Bread, cream, uh, almond, cream, and uh, some uh, uh, some uh, some fucking sugar on top. I mean, it's better. It really tasty. It's better than the chewy ears and fingers I've been having sugar, for the last Sugar, spice, weeks. and everything nice. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're real proper about it, you uh, eat the semla in a bowl of hot milk. Oh, I. That's, that sounds really good, actually. It really does. I think it I'd is. enjoy that. Uh, I found I out made... yesterday when I was in the um, when I was in one of our the voice chats in our Discord yeah, actually that apparently drinking official yet. Oh, it's fine. We'll get we'll get there in a second. It's fine. <laughs> I found out that apparently uh, from I mean again you know I, I was just outnumbered, but apparently we're weird for drinking milk, huh. straight milk. Apparently you, you and I are really weird for that. That's something that people don't do. Apparently, what do you mean? I do it. Looks great. I, I love- I yeah, it was great. I love it. <laughs> Who doesn't? I, got mil- I got milk right next to me. You right? know, oh, you know who <laughs> doesn't drink milk, right? The weak. Oh. Oh. <laughs> if you're Lactose physically capable of drinking milk, weak. you're weak. Your bloodline is weak. All right. Your bones, fucking rubber. <laughs> I spent 15 minutes getting fucking chastised by uh, uh, two Americans and a guy from New Zealand. To drinking milk, <laughs> like I was, t- I was made to feel like some sort of fucking freak who, for that. Who that chastises so- you for drinking milk? 
Can I name check our yes. Discord users on the podcast? Of this, course. This could be. Well, they go, it's our <laughs> server. It's our podcast. <laughs> they watch it. If they don't watch it, whatever. That's not our problem. Oh, I, it was. It was. All right, it was Barbon. Barbon was like the main one, right? Yeah, we, show you what, we'll just put all the blame on Barbon. <laughs> there we go. No, we'll I want, the hey, who the fuck's not the fucking non-milk drinking babies, all right? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Lactose intolerance call out right oh now. <laughs> right? It, was, it was it was it was Barbon, Xander, and Steph, all right? <laughs> it was Barbon, Xander, and Steph. Guys, I'm sorry, Red's gonna kill you. Bye. <laughs> It's milk. It's good for you. Uh, no fuck. Who who judges someone for enjoying a fucking glass of moo juice? For fuck's sake. Moo juice. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, oh, oh, I do like me some moo juice. Hell yeah. Moo juice. Fucking chalky chalky milk. Fuck yeah. Oh, chalky. Fuck yeah, dude. Hell yeah. I'd ki- I'd kill at least ten of our patrons to get free chocolate milk. <laughs> Their, li- their, their lives are only equal to how much chocolate milk they can attain for me. <laughs> oh, Holy fuck. Well, I, I appreciate your honesty, Red. Right, gentlemen, shall we move on <gasps> with the episode? So, sure, sure. Please, I'm going to get angry if I keep thinking about this milk <laughs> issue. <laughs> with, without further ado, welcome to another episode of the Astartes Anonymous podcast. Today, we have a fun little episode where we expect to go off topic as usual. However, as you can see, we have once again been blessed with an appearance from our good friend Alex, aka the gaming Ooh, storyteller, who's here to help us of discuss. Of his own free will. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely of his own free will. And he is here to help us discuss the lost slash missing Primarchs. I'm your host, Tom, and these are my co hosts. Well, hello, everyone. My name is Lucas, or better known as Moots. My name Red. Give me your milk. <laughs> and hi, I'm Alex, the gaming storyteller, and I am definitely not being kept in a cold cell. <laughs> you, you fucking read the script, you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> if you know it's good okay. for you. I'll, 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 I'll give an extra glass of milk next to the sabla. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. T- <laughs> what kind of milk? Um, no, he gets, he gets fucking soy milk. He gets soy milk. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Not even real milk. That's no. fake shit. Uh. <laughs> give, him the, give him the fucking femboy milk that Chrono Do hasn't what? had yet. Oh, Do what? No, oh. <laughs> Rule three. Oh. Rule three. Kill him. <laughs> Rule three. Kill him. My ties will be delicious, but I don't know if I can handle it. <laughs> Oh, uh, gentlemen, shall we talk about the missing Primarchs? Don't we have oh, models yes. of the week? Hell yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, the yeah. God, the oh, God, yeah. we completely forgot oh, the shit. models of the week. <laughs> Talking about milk, God is ticking about all things. <laughs> Let's talk about the models of the week, shall we? So, the first one up Did you say was... models of the milk? Or did I just hear that wrong? Jesus you got Christ milk on the mind. <laughs> you got milk on the mind, Moots. Milk Moots. <laughs> They call him Milky Moots for a reason, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Put him into the milker. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I'm I'm not looking forward to fan art of that. I'm just saying that's (laughs) what have you done? (laughs) Moots getting milked. Like they don't know. (laughs) If someone is listening and likes to do art, can you please draw like Moots getting dragged into a dark room by two night lords and me pointing into the room saying, "Put him into the milker." Oh, goodness. Right, so the first model of the week was actually picked by Alex. So this is a wonderful Screamer Killer kitbash made by a Discord (laughs) user called Ghoul. Yeah. Ghoul. The moment I saw it, just instantly licked Hellfax. Absolutely love the name. Um, Bane Scheme is great. I I love it when Bane Schemes have a little bit of, like, just nice basic colors. You have some flesh tones. You have uh, like colder tones together with the snow, but then like that nice wet, fleshy color like blended yeah. into the tips. It looks mm-hmm. awesome, and this conversion is a really good idea. I have I have a Carnifex standing behind me as well. I might have to do this. This is awesome. Uh. <laughs> it's great. Uh, Carnifex, yeah. I'm sorry for your imminent demise. <laughs> yeah, I'm very sorry about that. <laughs> And it was a great conversion. It's very simple, but it adds a whole new silhouette to the model. I love it. 
Yeah. It's Agreed. always crazy just how well, because you can see the actual top and rear and side of the head is the actual Screamer Killer head. Yeah, it it's fits mental perfectly. To me. Just how well those tentacles have gone on there. Can you imagine thing, this thing charges over the battle lines, killing everything in its path, and gets to you and slowly like, just caresses you with all those space tendrils? <laughs> <laughs> I remember a certain episode we did before. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I, I also want to point out just uh, like the the chitin and the uh, the base as well. I think is really well put together. Yeah, the base looks great. I think there's a wonderful little thing that I've noticed. If you look, if you do look at the 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 armor plating between each of the different sort of uh, layers of chitin, there's a um, brown little like. hint of red. Yeah, like a yeah. Yeah, red, 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 like a dark reddish. It brown. looks great. Like it adds a lot of definition to the armor. Yeah, it does. It has, it has loads. It's great. So, Ghoul, uh, well done. Thank you very much. Uh, looking forward to see more of these. That is, that is that's splendid. Shall we look at the next model of the week? For sure, for sure. So, the next one was picked by me, and this one is by a guy called Heydao. Uh, and Heydao is actually uh, hey Dow, very, a very, very... Get you, get you, get <laughs> 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 Fuck sacred. <laughs> And it's a very similar color scheme. It's a very similar color scheme. Uh, the 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 sort of the it's so black effective. armor and the lots of red. Mm. But he's actually, I think the the first thing that jumps me here is really the same as that will jump at everyone is the the use of the uh, red yuhu glue or mm-hmm. uhu glue, whatever it's fucking called, oh. to just make this lick to look. It's not sorry. Is this a lick or is this a von Ryan's leaper? leaper? Yeah, yeah, just to make it look super super fucking visceral. Yeah, it makes me go yuhu. <laughs> I'm always a really big fan of like the Yimgrawl like uh, tentacles in the face. The so the, yeah. the Death Leaper models are like just a W overall, and together with a paint job like this, nice and simplistic yet very striking, with the perfect use of Yuhu like glow stuff. It it's awesome. I love it. Very mm-hmm. striking model. Yeah. No, it's exquisite. Excellent job, Hado. Very wonderful. Impressive. Now let's see Paul Allen's. <laughs> 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 if we had, hold on, let me just search. Let me just search in the Discord real quick. See if we've got a user called Paul Allen. If we do, we're showing one of his models right now. We we uh, don't. Oh, what shit. the fuck Wait, is let me everyone? See if we've got one called Paul. No, we don't even have it. We don't even have a user called Paul. No. Sorry, oh. right? the server members are lame. They're all lame. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is this? What's going on? No, someone posted a picture of a naked man back in November. Oh. I, just, I found it by searching the word <laughs> Paul. <laughs> what the fuck? It's just from a user who got banned from the Discord. I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> for presumably for posting gonna, naked man, I guess. I'm just going to retroactively delete that, I suppose. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, so it's just from like November last year. <laughs> the hell? Very nice. Impressive. Anyways, <laughs> moving <laughs> moving on. <laughs> Shall we talk about the missing products? I actually wanted to open this with um, a little lore tidbit about the uh, lost Primarch. So the second of the eleventh that I didn't know until I started doing my research on it earlier today, mm-hmm. and that was that whilst Rogel Dawn was preparing for the siege of Terra, he actually stumbled across the tombs, or or at least a tomb, of one of the missing Primarchs. Oh, um, oh, and as he did, he thought to himself. Uh, he wanted to reminisce, right? He wanted to think about them and reminisce the time he had spent with them. And he realized that he couldn't. Mm. He realized that he couldn't do it. So Malkador sort of turned up uh, to the, Malkador sort of turned up to the show because obviously Rogel Dawn's like, "What the fuck? Why can't I remember my brother?" Hey, everybody, it's me, Malkador. <laughs> That's how it's introduced. <laughs> and and Malkador Malk- says to and Mal- Malkador and Dawn have a discussion. It gets quite heated at at, at one point because Malkador essentially admits to Rogel Dawn that everyone who had met the second and eleventh Primarchs, including their brother Primarchs, had their minds wiped of all memories and interactions involving them. Uh-huh. uh-huh. So like specific and so they knew they they still knew they existed. They probably knew what they looked like. They probably knew stuff like that. But re- but true details about them that mattered was completely wiped from from their memories. It, and there it, was this this sort of huge falling out that Dawn <coughs> and Malkador had over this fact cuz Dawn is like, well, you know, uh, maybe it was altruistic for one reason or another, but without truth it's all kind of worthless. And Malkador's like, "Nope, shut up, young man. You don't know what you're talking about." <laughs> you know. Oh, well, it it sort of goes deeper than that as well because uh, it also f- 
hinders them from even saying their names. It's like they, it's like no, right I'm pretty sure being choked the fuck out hinders them saying that their was, names. That, that, that was another. That was another story. <laughs> yes, where, but yes, uh, fucking Malkador just <laughs> I can't force say choking. The name. Something's hindering me. Fucking <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. No, but I, I think I can't remember exam- exactly the example. I think it's like. Magnus or someone who is uh, trying to say their name and they all have this like built in psychic lock that just either prevents them from like actively like saying their names or like someone else just kind of like no we're not talking about that um, I, th- I think it was Magnus was in a conversation and someone just mentioned like nah we, we don't talk about uh, them they're gone yeah hey Magnus you remember when my brothers got gang busted like no <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> Who? <laughs> Who? <laughs> huh? <laughs> huh? <laughs> but the um the, the example that that Red mentioned a moment ago mm. is the one that everyone thinks about, right? Yeah, yeah. This um, I think about it daily. This, you think about it. <laughs> so you think about Horace getting choked the fuck out by an old man daily. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Uh, I wonder what, 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 what like kind of rage that fuels in you. Yes, <laughs> understood. There, there is some troubles down there that he hasn't yet faced. <laughs> <laughs> but we all have other issues. <laughs> oh no! But but what happened was um, I completely forgotten what the context was. But I know it was Horus, Jagatai, and Alpharis, and it's likely mm-hmm. if it wasn't for. Jagatai and Alpharius, Horus would probably would have gotten a lot more than just a uh, unpleasant choking. But he was arguing with Malkador and he was trying to establish himself above Malkador, uh, trying to belittle Malkador. And Malkador basically literally just did a shut up child mm. moment. And, and Horus was like, well, you can't stop me from saying my brother's name. And Horus tries to say it and before he can get a word out. Malkador gives him the fucking business choke slams him <laughs> which obviously makes him drop to the ground and the only reason Horus didn't wasn't a lot worse off is because both Jagatai and Alpharius kind of pleaded with Malkador to, to not hurt him further yeah and it's it's like Malkador might there's uh, there was a really actually on the topic of Malkador uh-huh. you, you'll find this quite funny I'm trying to remember which book it was because I had it earlier today for the when I did my research for the short I needed to do but there is a story during the Horus Heresy, where I, for the life of me, I can't remember what it is. It's going to bug me, but I think it it might be it might be one of the master it might be the master of mankind, but I, it's probably not. That's not even the Horus Heresy. Um, but there's there's a moment. Long story short, there's a moment where the custodians right are getting bombed. Like custodians are having missiles shot at them, and custodians are getting bombed. Right, mm-hmm. and and guess who's with them? Oh, it's Malkador. And the custodians being custodians are just like, well, we're just going to run away because we're custodians. If you think space marines are fast, like custodians, they are fast. Yeah. Those guys, those if they want to sprint, that's a fucking meow. meow. <laughs> but the, fu- the fun thing that happened was Malkador was with them, right? And as they were running away, Malkador kept up with them. Whoa. Oh, he wore could you imagine he that wore for a Heelys second? that day, of course. <laughs> <laughs> have, you seen, have, you guys, have you guys seen that video of the of the sort of the uh the skinny old um babushka lady with her shopping bags running on water? <laughs> yeah. Yes. That 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 was I'll, I'll put it on the screen now. That was Malkador then. Just booting it along, skipping water. <laughs> what I always found interesting about Malkador, like specifically when it comes to the second and eleven Primarch, is on the book The Sigilite, I think it is, on the cover, he sits on his like personal throne, I guess like his relaxing yeah. throne. And he has the well, it says skulls with the numbers on them, the second and the eleventh. Mm-hmm. Which, of course, is a 40k <laughs> nod to that stuff. But it, it's it's it, I have always found it really interesting as to like Everybody got mind wipes, but he remembers. And I wonder as well, like, has he told other people? We know he had that elder character that he, human elder character he kept alive for a long time. Well, that might know. There's also subject 11 in the fucking shadow vaults. Yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, the, the, oh, bloody hell. Uh, the dark cells. Yes. Yeah, the dark cells with the Shadow Keeper money gang. 
<laughs> shadow keeper, <laughs> the shadow keeper money gag. So, for anyone who doesn't know, anyone who's who's unaware, the dark cells are ostensibly this prison. This, the SCP this Foundation. Eldri- it is yes, it's the Terra <laughs> SCP Foundation. It's basically just kept underneath the Imperial Palace. And there is an entire shield host of custodians essentially dedicated to keeping the Dark Cells, and they are called the Shadow Keepers. And there is a being down there, which you know fuck all about. All we know is they're very big, very dangerous, so much so they've earned a place in the Dark Cells. And they're called Subject 11, and it's led to an awful lot of fan uh, theorization that Subject 11 could potentially be... Um, the 11th Primarch. I don't know much about it, but I do know the custodians have a fucking hard time putting him down. So, whatever that (laughs) means. There's a few things that I've seen pieced together and perhaps is a decent half-baked theory. But from what I've I've read, I can only assume that the Rognadzino side, if you remember that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, The the Rognadzino, yep. It was always referenced that as well as the first time a Stardust on a Stardust combat happened. So... I can only assume that for whatever reason that one of the Primarchs may be allied with a Xeno state and tried to help them mm. instead. On top of that, like it, it said that the 11th did something that was considered her, uh, like heretical to the point of like requiring censure and um, like annihilation. Yeah, mm. and somehow that whatever the 11th did, it <coughs> dragged the second down with it with him. Because the second was always said to be kind of calm and peace-loving from what snippets of lore we have. I know yeah. Horus ruminated on the idea that the second was always more um, passionate, not passionate, but he, he, was he, the, the second wasn't a violent soul or whatever mm, what yeah. they refer to. So there's a, the, the theory that I've seen go around is that the 11th did something that involved the wrong Don Zenos and it mm. somehow dragged the second down with him. It might be, uh, I, think. Uh, I forget the name of the Xenos, but there's a Xenos species that were there during the Rangdang Xenocide that had like mind flayer viruses that like mm-hmm. turned people against each other or could like take control of them. So that mm-hmm. that could be, if that, if that like with a fan theory like that, it could definitely hold up with the right circumstances. Th- that's another thing is that I heard is that, oh, well, these Xenos clearly like, um, took control of the 11th Primarch and turned him against the Imperium, like, yeah, yeah, I would say that too if I wanted to, like, cover up a huge fuck-up on my part. (laughs) (laughs) True, honestly, that's a very fair point. I I think whatever the 11th did, he did knowingly and uh, consciously, and fucking was like, fuck it, we ball. (laughs) It makes it sound less bad. (laughs) Uh, I... I am always been fond of the theory that uh, whatever they did, the, the reason why they are so like, you know, uh, what's it called censored right now is because, yeah. as the uh, original uh, offer of forty k um, intended, they were actually meant to be absolved, absolved of their uh, of whatever they did, and that's why they. Oh. so like they they were basically just freed from existence basically yeah uh, that's a funny way of putting executed <laughs> yeah <laughs> congratulations you are being freed from your pr- flesh prison you no longer have to pay taxes <laughs> it is the emperor and Malkador we're talking about <laughs> yeah, exactly exactly <laughs> no but, like i've always liked the idea because i mean the common theory is uh oh like pretty much always oh they did something so terrible something so bad but what if there was the opposite what if they just were you know actually did something so great that they instead of being remembered for their failures simply wasn't remembered at all what Moose, <laughs> you're doing me a fucking brain hemorrhaging here. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, no, I, it doesn't, I, I make, the, it doesn't make a same, lot of sense. I read the same thing, and I always thought it made no fucking sense, because, like, haha, maybe if they fucked up colossally and to such a spectacular fashion that it made Horus's heresy uh, fucking look calm, and then they fixed it, and then they got, I don't know. It's, it's fucking weird. It is weird. It is weird. Another thing we do know is that for some reason, people keep referencing how the Ultramarines and the Imperial Fists got a sudden increase in their numbers. So that's well, part th- of the theory that you know they took some of the legions of the lost Primarchs. 
Yeah. As the uh, the, the local successor chapter nerd, um, <laughs> <laughs> you tell me, look me straight in the eyes and tell me that the Mortifactors are a successor chapter of the Ultramarines. <laughs> tell me right now. <laughs> <laughs> There's also the Soul Drinkers, if anyone remembers them. Uh, exactly. Yeah. They're, they're the Emperor that. Spears Ultramarine successes as well. Yeah. Supposedly, yeah. They're, they don't they're, act like it. They're, they're, no, they're, no, no. They're, they're fucking radical, those guys. <laughs> I fucking love the Emperor Spears. <laughs> fuck yeah. Oh yeah, but they're there's, cool as there's, fuck. There's a, I think the theory with what happened to the, the Lost Primarchs that I subscribe to the most comes from um, one, of, one of the many James uh, Swallow uh, Blood Angel books, uh, Fear, to, uh, Fear to Tread. Mm-hmm. Uh, and in that book, Horus. And I'll, I'll read out the tiny little extract in a minute. But in that in that book, Horus actually stumbles across Sanguinius uh, killing one of his own Marines. Mm. Uh, and Horus is like, "Bro, what the fuck are you doing?" <laughs> you know, it's like like coming. I'm just coming. taking a little sit. <laughs> it's like imagine like walking behind the the shed to find like. Someone you know very well doing something really, really weird back there, you know, <laughs> yes. something with a small animal and a hammer kind of situation. And he sees he sees his brother just killing this blood angel for like no fucking reason. Uh, and Sanguinius very quickly explains to him about the, you know this sort of the burgeoning of the red thirst. Mm-hmm. And so we we know that the black rage happened after Sanguinius bit the dust, but the red thirst that shit was always there. It was just a little bit inert, but not quite. And this marine had fallen to it. So Sanguinius had to give him the the one stop shot check out, um, and Horus basically said to him, "Listen, why the fuck don't you tell Dad?" Uh, and Sanguinius basically got really mad at him, and he said, "He said to Horus, and this is this is just me reading here." He said, "You know the reason." He answered with a snarl, "I will not be responsible for the erasure of the Blood Angels from Imperial history. I will not have a third empty plinth beneath the roof beneath." The Ruth of the Hegemon as my legion's only memorial. Mm-hmm. And so th- this is kind of the, the, the theory that I subscribe to, that when you think of the genetic defects that the Blood Angels have, and you think of the genetic defects that the Space Wolves have with the Wolfen, and the genetic defects that the Thousand Sons had with the uh, Flesh Change, my theory mm-hmm. is that what happened to the 2nd and 11th, or at least one of them, was that they had something along the lines of that, but it was way too much to bear. So much so that when 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 it characterized itself, Sanguinius saw it and was like, holy shit, I cannot let anyone know about the Red Thirst, or I'm just going to get put in the ground like they are. Mm. I, I always took that idea that like it, he wasn't... I don't think that there was mutation with the other legions. I just think Sanguinius thought it was just as bad that mutation that mm, would cause could the be. erasure. I always thought it was just him like overthinking the I, the, the situation, so to say, <laughs> because like only because the idea that oh these legions got wiped out because they are mutated is so fucking boring. <laughs> well, I mean, it is also uh, equally possible. I mean, but that's the whole point of this uh, discussion, right? To try and <laughs> find the truth. <laughs> But, um, but I do generally believe when it comes to the mutations in the legions and why certain legions were allowed to live on beyond others or like were like get, given extra resources to grow as fast as possible was just due to certain defects being actually useful. Mm. Like having a large amount of psychers, even having the red tears, even if the emperor would have found out about it, I don't think he would have cared much because it just made them stronger. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the, the fucking Thousand Suns had the flesh change. And yeah. the um, <coughs> Emperor's children. children had super mm. cancer. <laughs> <laughs> well, apparently that wasn't bad enough. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> and the Emperor kept... But then maybe these two legions had, or at least one of them, had something as awful as they just couldn't produce any marines. Like, yeah. that could have been that could have been the, one, one of the most boring answers, but that might be it. It was just like 10 marines and that's it. They just killed over after five years. I'm just trying to remember the other defects. Was that the lot? Because I know that the the, the Wolfen didn't appear. I mean, the Wolfen mm. kind of appeared during the burning of Prospero, but they didn't appear properly until the scouring. I always oh. thought it's because Lehman t- had had a really good job of keeping the Wolfen under lock and key. Yeah, probably. Probably. Probably his Primark influence uh, God, that helped would, with that. that. Would actually, God, it's a shame that Arthur's not here, because that would make 
Lehman even more of a fuck ass. <laughs> Wouldn't it really? <laughs> Hopefully he Im- listens Imagine to how much episodes. of a fucking asshole he is towards Magnus about psychers and and warp shenanigans, <laughs> and he's just there like you're a you're a bitch for all this warp shenanigans, and he's just hiding his warp afflicted sons <laughs> under the fucking no table. Man. Like <laughs> <laughs> uh, th- this this goes on the Astartes Anonymous bingo uh, <laughs> to talk shit <laughs> about Lehman. <laughs> Lehman <run. laughs> Literally though, Lehman is, Lehman is kind of a fucking idiot. Let's yeah, be yeah, fair. Yeah, there's there's fucking no doubt about it. <laughs> but here's a, what here's kind a of tea I've gotten lost down. All right, <laughs> right. I, I bet one of the other Primarchs was way cooler in terms of the theme. Right. But that's what happened. Lehman got jealous because the fucking eleventh was more fucking Viking than him. <laughs> yeah, he was actually real Viking, not fucking wolf not cosplayer. Wolf, 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 wolf. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, but uh, another theory that I don't see a lot of people uh, uh, push for is the idea that maybe, just maybe, not not all of them, because we know that uh, they one of them actually like had interactions with the other, but what if one of the Lost Primarchs weren't actually even found? <laughs> oh, uh, let's just, I'll just <laughs> we can't <laughs> ultimate to tomb we yeah, can't yeah, fucking find we just find the second one ah, uh, fuck, erase it still, <laughs> still looking for him <laughs> yeah. shit yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fucking imagine I mean, he, they, he just erased the knowledge of them because the emperor was just so ashamed of the fact that he just lost one of his fucking boys, he's like, ah, oh, fuck ah, <laughs> uh, shit uh, yeah, Erda, absolutely we, uh, <laughs> know exactly where they are we just uh, he was just a very bad boy <laughs> they, they didn't keep him away from the bleach they yeah. didn't keep him away <laughs> he, he, he broke he broke my law there we go the yeah. not, not yeah. existing when I fucking needed him to <laughs> <laughs> fucking prick <laughs> it's quite funny though because a lot of people like to mention and I, I've just done some googling and I can't find what it is that I'm looking for but I, I know it's true so I'm going to run with the I'm going to run with the point anyway a lot of people like to say that whatever because we know that Lehman the, the idiot has this whole thing where he's the emperor's executioner right mm-hmm. yeah um a lot of people like to say that oh well Lehman was definitely responsible for the killing of the second and the eleventh, or either, or right, mm, yeah. and they're and they're and you know and how the the space souls would have helped him decimate their legions or or whatnot. Yeah, but that's, but that's not actually, actually true. No, that's we, not we, true. It, we actually have well the thing the point I'm trying to make is we actually have proof that it's not true because mm. after the burning of Prospero, and this is a fun one. This is a really interesting one. This actually disproves some of the the the, the Rangdun xenocide theories as well, because after the burning of Prospero. The Space Wolves, their serfs, and with Lehman's input, wrote a codex. And I could not remember for the life of me what it's called. The Codex uh, Omega. Uh, is it the Codex right. Omega? Mm-hmm. And so they wrote the Codex Omega. And what essentially happened was uh, the Codex Omega was basically um, how to kill. It was basically the how to kill Space Marines, right? And keep in mind, uh-huh. the Burning of Prospero was about something like six months before the heresy really went balls deep and so all the primarchs are still mostly on on talking terms with one another um and the reason he wrote the codex omega was because it was canonically the first time space marines had fought and killed other space marines on mass and so the idea of space marines doing war with other space marines curious little note about that yeah but we just all said earlier primarchs, that the, no other no, primarchs have any actual memories of the fucking lost primarchs Mm. Oh, it kind of counters it, doesn't it? Well, a curious, also, a curious little note about me, that. you're telling me, Lehman, the guy who can't even fucking read, wrote a book. <laughs> it, well, he's, he's allowed to have scribes, isn't he? Yeah, you can just talk to them. <laughs> you know, but there is there is a little fact about the Codex Omega that I just want to throw out there, because every time I remember it, I have to bring this fact up. Every single Primarch, bar three, thought that the Codex Omega was a terrible fucking idea. The fact that it even existed or could exist frightened and angered all of them. Except for three. <laughs> One of them was Alpharius, because Alpharius is just sneaky, underhand, you know. Yeah, and the next, to do it to him. The next one was Ferris Manus, because Ferris Manus is like, oh, I could be stronger. Great. <laughs> and the last one, 
as you might expect, was Conrad Kurz. Hell yeah. Oh. <laughs> because Conrad Kurz just wanted to kill them all. No one's innocent. What a lovely guy. <laughs> what a fella. <laughs> what a great dude. <laughs> what a dude. Uh, hey, he made he he brought he he got the job done. All right. <laughs> wait, wait, what? He got a job done. He got, got himself done. Hey, he got a proper kill. I mean, he killed a few guys. At least at least twelve. Which Primark did he get killed? What, himself. <laughs> Still counts. Count. Count. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking oof. Fucking oof. <laughs> I mean, you, 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 you're only allowed to count Vulcan once, all right? <laughs> Bullshit! He fucking wrecked his shit. Oh my god, he had like a fucking training dummy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh jeez! It's just like it's just like that. He's the, what's that show called where it's like they have to make fucking knives and swords, right? And then they they oh. take the knives and swords against these ballistic dummies filled with like red gel and fake blood and shit. Mm. That's that's literally all Kurz Forged used Vulcan fire. for. Forged in fire. That's, that's literally just Kurz and Vulcan. <laughs> <laughs> look, look. He managed to get capture Vulcan, one of the biggest, strongest Primarchs. He captured it is quite Vulcan, and then he fucking got him aboard his ship and then fucked with him for like, I don't know of how long, a, a long enough to make Vulcan like have a crisis in faith. What I found most impressive is that he, during all, the, sometimes during all this time, he also built an entire fucking, pir- uh, fucking labyrinth. He got put to Robbo to build the, pir- the, the labyrinth. Oh. In his own shit. Yes. I don't know what conversation Kurz had to have with, like, <laughs> Peter, I need you to build me an impossible <laughs> labyrinth inside your own ship. So it's possible that even the Primarch will go insane. So I may hunt Vulcan down in it. Would you just go insane? I am already insane, so I'll be immune to the Labyrinth's wily ways. The crazy part is that he actually said yes. Yeah, that's it. He's just like, mm, let's see where this goes. Ah, uh, sure. Honestly, no, that was just R and R for Perturabo, yeah. truthfully. I, I, I like the idea that <coughs> whilst uh, Conrad is like explaining the details of it, uh, Perturabo just goes, oh yeah, here you go. I already had it. <laughs> <laughs> I already built it for you. <laughs> I was working on a similar concept for when I eventually captured <laughs> Robodor, the prick. <laughs> <laughs> And then, and then he, and then he fucking puts Vulcan's hammer in the middle of it. And like, the, what, what was the conversation after Vulcan escaped? Kurz fucking limps back after he got his fucking shit rocked and opens the door. And Perturab was just like, "What the fuck happened to you?" He's like, "Vulcan escaped." He's like, "What?" <laughs> he got the hammer. He got the what? <laughs> What do you mean he got his hammer? They gave him the hammer. <laughs> like, why? <laughs> oh, my God. That just would be funny. <laughs> for, oh, here, there's a theory for you. One, the Lost Primarchs are in that fucking labyrinth. There yeah. you go. <laughs> yeah, they're still, they're still there. <laughs> they're, they're still there. <laughs> Where is the They've fucking there for iron millennia. blood, anyway? <laughs> <laughs> you know, gentlemen, I would like to take some time to talk about the archetypes they could have been. Now, we all know that the, <clears throat> the, the Primarchs as they exist right now, or did exist, uh, some of them, uh, filled different sort of, you know, uh, what's the word? Roles. Niches. Roles. Mm-hmm. Well, I was going to say s- stereotypes in a way. Mm-hmm. You know, Yeah. Each one of them, and we could list them all, but we, we'll be here for a little while, so we're not going to bother. Everyone, everyone knows what they all are to an extent. What would we, if we could choose, three of us each, would have like the archetypes to it, of at least one of archetypes or stereotypes of at least one of those missing Primarchs to have been Scottish. Yeah, Scottish. Celtic. Immediately. Uh, yeah. Immediately. Scottish. I, I, I've put thought into this Scotland before. Scotland forever! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've been thinking about this, man. This is, this is not my first rodeo. <laughs> 
yeah, like I don't know if people follow Moots, but he does like little Patreon polls, and he does little. He has done Easter eggs of what he thinks the Lost Primarchs are, and there's one of them that's just straight up fucking Scottish. He has like a yeah, big Celtic cross it. on his fucking belt buckle. I remember Hell that yeah. one. <laughs> It's great. No, yeah, I, I was know, I was thinking I the same what... fucking thing. It's fucking yeah, Scottish, yeah. <laughs> Scottish prom walk. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's definitely the uh, the upstart. He was the one who rebelled. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that the reason the Codex so ma- even if the Primarchs kept their memories, like Lehman kept his memories about the fucking uh, the war with the Eleventh. I'm pretty sure he didn't write a book on that. Because the Scottish Primarch kicked his ass so thoroughly <laughs> that he just got amnesia from it. He, he, he was traumatized. He just wakes up sweating at night. Freedom. Freedom. <laughs> Freedom. The fucking, this is the, the fucking shit on Lehman Russ episode again. <laughs> uh, can I, I, can I, I tick the bingo box twice? Hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, I just imagine like Lehman running through a fucking like the 11th ship and then he opens the door and the 11th's right there and he immediately just like reaches for him. <laughs> like, I'm here you little wolf bastard. <laughs> I can tell you what, if that's the case, I'd want him to be his, his physicality, his appearance, I'd want him to look fat. Mm-hmm. Like, he, like, like strong, but like strong fat. Like, um, yeah. what are you talking about? He looked like Thor from God of War Ragnarok. <laughs> no, 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 no. So you see here, he looks like the Scotsman from Samurai Jack. <laughs> <laughs> he is just a Scotsman. He doesn't wear power. He doesn't need power armor. I, was, exactly. I don't know. I was thinking. I was thinking Thor from God of War. Yeah, that's what uh, I literally just said. Uh, that. Uh, that's great. Yeah, that that's a good one. I like uh, straight up a Highlander. Yeah. <laughs> What about, what about the other one, right? What about the other one? Because I, I Japanese. I was I was about to say cause everyone everyone chucks around the idea of a a samurai primark, and you could kind of see that we think of the theory about one of them was too much of an upstart, and the other one was too friendly. And it's not because he was too friendly, but in good samurai fashion, he's just content to let what is be. Pretty sure you know, samurais yeah. were he, fucking very very hardcore in there during their time. He, Come yeah, on, man! I'm, yeah. I'm fucking with I'm fucking with the stereotype, all right. So, 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 so look here. I I just came from uh, what uh, from a cinema watching a movie called Samurai Rebellion, and let me tell you, those samurais do not have any chill in their bones. They <laughs> they <laughs> are ready to fuck. They go out like, fighting. To be, to be honest, get, getting a bit culturally here, the code like we they they have the bushido code, right? And mm-hmm, then they have mm-hmm. then then the Europeans have the chivalric code, right? Where chivalry mm-hmm. is basically how a knight was supposed to act and we all equate it to being very proper and gentlemanly now today's but back in the fucking way back when <laughs> when we were killing each other with fucking long swords knights were anything but chivalrous in fact they no. were kind of fucking terrible <laughs> yes because well, they were they were a, warlords for lack of a better term yeah because it built into the, both the bushido and the chivalric code is like basically saying hey this idea of maintaining inner peace or maintaining like good values to yourself. <laughs> so that's why I think that's why we I th- equate Sabrise to being a bit more, you know, peaceful than they actually were because the Bushido code or what we see today mm. is very much like fucking haikus, meditation. All, I'm, I mean, I'm not yeah. that educated. So if someone well, is more educated you, than right, me, though. please comment you're your anger right. down in the fucking comments. <laughs> well, no, it's, it, but that's, that's a really good take on how we are as a sort of modern society when we look at things that we want to idolize but probably shouldn't. So take the Bushido or the, or the code chivalric, for example, it is ostensibly just people going, let's look at the good things and the nice things. Pretend that that's yeah. what this is all about. Mm. And then completely disregard the these guys killed babies! <laughs> Just completely disregard all of that. Like, built you know. into the chivalric code is if you get your honor besmirched, challenge that dude and fucking kill him. <laughs> <laughs> when I originally wrote my own homebrew for a Lost Legion, which was meant to be the second Legion... I think we've all done um, that before. We have all done that at some point. It's, it's part of, like, getting into the hobby. You have to write your own Lost Legion at some point. <laughs> I, remember. I uh, went for a Aztec team instead oh. of, like, Asian... And the thing is, when I did a lot of research into that culture as a whole, like, because of course we know the things about, oh, they have the big temples, they sacrifice the gods, and that's like the maximum of it. They were also the masters of water, which I think in the 40k sense, we are completely missing 
99% of the time. Mm-hmm. I have never read any wars happening underwater, but I can tell you there's a little species down there. I mean, the Dark <laughs> so, specialize in water now. Yeah, true. True, exactly. So for me, the Aztecs were also always about their dark side of the culture that I thought like added a lot more interest into it. Um, they were called the Eagle Warriors, just the most basic name I could give them. But I, I always <laughs> quite enjoyed the Aztec approach to it because you can show more of the horrifying parts that the Emperor may have wanted to leave behind before the Great Crusade. And he just wasn't able to beat out of one of his sons. I think that's really cool. I like that concept. I mean, if, if we're talking about... Um shit we did when i originally got into the idea uh my own homebrew that's now called the storm engines is celtic like um nordic Mm. themed right originally when i got into the home (laughs) when i got into the hobby and i was writing all this stuff it was real the lord i thought about the lost primarchs i instead made it to where the original name was called the operators and that they're actually the 11th legion and their primarch was scottish but also like (laughs) A, a maintenance type dude like basically oh. think of like uh perturabo or um or ferris Manis. <laughs> looking back it just doesn't <laughs> work at fucking all and i had my fucking it was like, just there for upkeep it was just there for upkeep right <laughs> but I, I love that though it has a nice vibe to it it's just the big <laughs> chilling guy in the background having a good time Hell fixing yeah. the fortress and, and the only re- fixing the barb ways is awesome and i wrote the only reason that he got wiped out was because he was fucking with ai uh, well, okay. i like that that's a cool twist to it yeah, yeah. i think that <clears throat> i i personally never actually touched the subject of the um the homebrew uh, lost uh, primarchs. I, I don't know why. I guess it's sort of part of the mystery for me that which is I, weird I, I re- because you rarely... have such an expansive uh, AU. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, like I, I had some people ask me like, "Oh, will you draw the um, the lost primarchs?" And I was like, "No, I don't think so," because that's like sort of part of the charm of them. I guess that's not to say that I don't think you like I, that you should. Like you put a face on them or whatever, if I can do whatever you want, hell, I'm, I'm yeah. not your dad. But uh, it's, uh, <laughs> you know, it's just personal preference. I, yeah. And it, because it is what allows people to do whatever they want with them. So, yeah, honestly, like, I, like, there's a lot of cool concepts I've, I've seen online of what the Lost Primers could be. And I think the problem comes with it, like, if you're a lore purist, that I, I kind of am. Like you see some people's like takes on them, and they're just awful. Mm-hmm. But like yeah. at, the, at the same time, it, it's a double edged sword because Primarchs are such so integral to like the Imperium and Warhammer in and of itself because they're these larger than life mythological beings that have really no equals. That once you write one to add into the roster, it kind of is always going to be intrusive because yeah. it's yeah. it's kind of hard not to make it intrusive because they're a fucking Primarch. Mm, mm. Well, it's it's gotten even more difficult since the start of the Horus Heresy series, right? For because sure. Because from, from then, when when with that first Dan Abnett book, everything is very slowly to the you know to the climax with the Death in the End Part Three, which came out you know about a week ago from the time of recording. Uh, things have been you know become set in stone, and so before then, before that time, there was this idea, right, that the reason. Uh, from a, a uh, from a more pragmatic standpoint, that the second and eleventh primarchs were quote unquote just not named, well, so that you could homebrew your own, just in the same way you can homebrew a legion, you can homebrew a chapter, you can homebrew a character, mm-hmm. you can homebrew a warband, you homebrew whatever you want. So much of forty k is centered around this concept, but it's almost like in a sort of unofficial sense since the start of the Horus Heresy novels and coming to a conclusion now it's kind of like gw has gone actually yes keep doing your homebrews but maybe don't homebrew these guys <laughs> and it's it's why when people say to us because again you know if you're new to the podcast um or if you're not new to the podcast you'll know you'll know very well in our discord that we are huge um proprietors of 40k homebrewing uh one of the things that people ask me is when they say hey tom i want to homebrew a primark H- how should i go about it i'll say home or, or even or even homebrew a whole legion i'll simply say do an au mm. just do an au you can make the au yeah. pretty much identical to the actual canon setting if you want but do an au 
Mm. Because if you don't do an AU, yeah, you cannot. It cannot like fit into the law. It just can't. It's just not possible unless your primarch, unless your law consists of, we don't know his name and we don't know what happened to him and he died. You know. Yeah, yeah. I, I there feel like there is I, the very few like uh, ideas that one of the pri- lost primarchs was actually female. <laughs> Ah yes, of course. We 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 kind I sound, of have I see that. we kind of have evidence against that. The conversation with the emperor and Malkador when uh, Malkador suggested to the emperor that he make all the primarchs women so that they'd be less prone to all of the stereotypical male bullshit, and the emperor and the emperor um, the emperor laughed at him. And Malkador, and Malkador's thought processes, he thought I was joking, but I wasn't. And so the emperor, to, to the emperor, yeah. the idea of making the Primarchs women was was a, a laughable thing to the emperor, which really stings to how much of a fucking asshole the emperor really was. Yeah. He's kind of a horrible guy. <laughs> he was not a great guy. No. He was not no. a great guy. Well, he was under the like, illusion that he was. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. He may look tyrant, as tyrant mu- warlord, as much murderer, shit, genocide. As, as much shit as you give, like the traitor legions, and especially like the night lords for being how they are. The emperor made the fucking night lords <laughs> yeah. from death row yeah. inmates. He knew what he was doing. <laughs> oh, definitely for sure, for sure. Especially if you follow the theory that each primarch represents a piece of his humanity that he just ripped out of himself and, and yeah uh, red curves will represent my schizophrenic yeah. paranoia <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, nature versus nurture i don't know <laughs> Malkador, it's going to be sick i'm going to make this leech entirely out of death row inmates and i'm going to give my paranoia to this guy <laughs> Biggie, what the He's fuck, g- <laughs> bro? It's gonna be awesome. They're gonna like you. It's gonna be too. so fucked up. It's gonna be sweet. <laughs> like he's gonna like suffer from horrible visions of his demise. <laughs> It's gonna be epic, I swear, bro. <laughs> it's just then, a prank, bro. <laughs> and then I have this other one. They're gonna be like vampires. But they won't <laughs> suffer from their horrible... Like, they'll also suffer from their horrible, like, demise. But this one will look pretty. Big E, what the fuck do you mean, vampires? <laughs> that doesn't sound very good. <laughs> no, no, I swear, bro, it'll be cool. Hell yeah, they'll suck blood and everything. <laughs> I'm the master... Malkador, I promise you, I have a I have a good plan. We take those like two thousands um, oh, German no. dancers <laughs> under the bridge with the emo vibe and get, and just make them a legion. Just think about it. It's like, just no, no, see it's the like, vision there. Like, Malkador, <laughs> I'm going to make this Primark right. He's going to be more practical, intelligent, and willing than all of the others put together. But I'm going to make him have to see hell at all times, <laughs> permanently. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the, the, the Malkador, most potential of Perturabo, honestly. Malkador, have you ever read Heart of Darkness? <laughs> <That's> true. <laughs> Great book. <laughs> Mal- <laughs> Malkador, Malkador, have you ever read The Dark Angel? <laughs> so get this, the first one, right? Great guy, I want to name him Lionel Johnson. <laughs> after the poet? Yeah, after the poet. <laughs> I fucking love that guy. He's great. Uh, fucking hardcore Catholic, though. Cringe. <laughs> we call him Ferris Manus. We call him Ferris Manus. I'm pretty sure you guys uh, name off Medusa. And like... Uh, like, but that's weird. Uh, so, like the Iron Hands, I'm not sure if the Iron Hands had a name change when they found Ferris Manus, but I know Ferris Manus yes, got they his did. name. Oh, they did. So Ferris yep. Manus got his name Ferris Manus when he got his Iron Hands. He, the people of this <laughs> planet named him Iron Hands for his Iron Hands, and then when he got his Legion, he's like, "All right, now you guys are called the Iron Hands as well." <laughs> Hell yeah! <laughs> I'm so creative, Dad. <laughs> a lot of them also have Iron Hands. Yep. Oh. At least it's not the space wolves. Ugh. Yeah, but, but to be honest, if you break if you break down all the legions and how fucking ludicrously 
bullshit, batshit insane they are, <laughs> there's a lot of wiggle room to make the Lost Primarchs, to be <sighs> honest. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah to be is. fair, I'll, like, I mean, uh, on honesty, most of the names are pretty weird. Like, fucking Blood Angels, ooh, yes. <laughs> I, I wonder what we're all about. <laughs> no, the Blood Angels were, named, were called the Revenants. Yeah, yeah, I'm a lovely bunch of guys, I swear. <laughs> I I absolutely love the pre-Primark names, mm-hmm. like Dusk Raiders, uh, those, those are so it's, cool. Oh, oh, God, I fucking love them. Yeah. Those are awesome The names. best part is when they don't get a name change. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, the Night Lords didn't get a name change. The no. Emperor called them the Night Lords. <laughs> <laughs> also, also, on top of that, like some of the Primarchs got their names from their planets, but other Primarchs yeah. just ha- have, like, there's two Primarchs I know have their original name. Perturabo, because he just knew who, what his name was, and Conrad mm. Kurz, because the Emperor found him and called him Conrad Kurz. Before that, he was only called <laughs> the Night Haunter. <laughs> yeah. Why the fuck did the Emperor... And, and we know Mortarion <laughs> has a true name. But the Emperor only, or someone only told Caldor Drago. Well, okay, I think that's a bit different, because that's the true name of, that's like the magical true name. Uh, you know, if if that makes any sense. I, I There's some fear about, or, you know. in The theory that they are technically minor gods, so, or like at least very strong demons, which would give them a true name you can influence them with. Yeah, yeah. That's just well, a theory, like, a I, game I guess, like in, in in many like magic uh, like sorcery books. I don't know. I'm pulling this from uh, a book series called uh, Skullduggery Pleasant. If you know it, congratulations. You're just as nerdy as wow. I am. <laughs> I, have, I, have, I have no one said Skullduggery Pleasant to me in years. <laughs> You just yeah, a lot of cool money. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> Long story short, skeleton detective with magic. Yeah. Oh um, yeah. And, and anyway, they they have this book with everybody's true name, and that's like their, you know, if you had gain, if you have that name, you gain control. You gain like total control of them, or like a, a lot of power, I guess. Anyways. Secretly, it isn't Mortarion's name at all. It's just Enuncia. Uh-huh, he can just yes. use it on anyone. He just doesn't know. <laughs> Wait, <it's, laughs> what, so. what, you know what? Why the fuck did the Emperor fuck with the Warp? Like, the Emperor doesn't want to fuck with the Warp at all, right? Mm. He So he makes the Primarch's half-Warp thing. Yet he knows about the Catan. Why the fuck did he just go to the Void Dragon and somehow s- learn how to siphon the Void Dragon's power to make the Primarch's instead? <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I feel like he had to walk a very thin line between do I want these guys to be uh, based on, uh, like, literally, uh, like, space uh, parasites, or do I want them to be based on things that just... Uh, love to eat souls. <laughs> or, well, okay, actually, that well, applies to both of them, but whatever. <laughs> I, I think the Emperor wanted to create a Primarchs pretty quickly. Like, he yeah. was kind of rushed with the entire project. I imagine the Warp version was just a uh, fucking the canonical option. The was stronger than the Emperor. He couldn't get them to do what he wanted. <laughs> Well, well, <laughs> it was just like fuck now. Well, actually, actually, I guess that's actually has some merit to it. I mean, we know that the Catans are very tricky bastards. Like, uh, I mean, sure, the Chaos One Gods of them are the deceiver. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I mean, the Chaos Gods are equally yes, but they can also definitely be manipulated and tricked because they're entirely emo- emotionally based whilst the katans i don't think are so uh, i think they're more free in a sense they are also semi predictable in the way they are mm. because they they only represent a certain parts and if the emperor can play around those emotions around those human desires he yeah, he could have easily influenced them. And I think this was just a way faster option for him to produce his sons, get the Imperium together, uh, and then go on with his Webway project. Because for the Webway project, he also needed to warp. So I, like, he was all right with dabbling with it. He just didn't want humanity to be reliant on it. For sure. I like to think part of it is because the, he does, he, like, psychic shit don't work on the Catan, right? Mm. Yeah, so he's just, he's just a big dude hitting them. I mean, they're just really confused about it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, like, I like the idea that, like, like clairvoyance doesn't work on a Catan. Uh, <laughs> maybe, maybe. 
Like you, you like it, it's impossible to predict what they're fucking doing. <laughs> <laughs> fucking someone just uh, fucking the emperor looked at the uh, uh, whatever the fuck the Catan was he fought. Uh, Dragon the of, void dragon. Dra- yeah, the void dragon. He's like, uh, have at the dra- What the fuck? Why can't I understand you? No! Why don't you die? <laughs> 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 Fucking void dragon uh, casts brain aneurysm upon the emperor. <laughs> Just, yeah, I bet Catan has the list of unethical spells at hand. <laughs> I cast testicular torsion. No. <laughs> Mend butt crack. <laughs> <laughs> I cast anal taste In- buds. <laughs> no. No. That's it. I'm. Ge- you're getting inverted holes. <laughs> oh Jesus! Oh God! Were we talking about lost primarchs? Oh yeah. Maybe right. that's yes. why. Oh. They, maybe that's why they fucking bit the dust because, like, the emperor made them with void dragon juice, and they were just they were just a little bit fucking wrong. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Every time one of them walks into the room, it's like a demon core. <laughs> and just fucking, like, it's... Goddamn every time... number 11, you gave all the delegation cancer. <laughs> one of them, every time it walks, he just has, a, like, a vine boom in the back. <laughs> He's got sick and tired actually, of it. Actually, why the fuck doesn't, like, you know what I would like to see? A Primark being creative with how the fuck he's fucking with people, right? Mm. Why, why doesn't Perturabo invite, like, a delegation from a planet he's trying to comply into, like, a meeting room? And in there, he's just holding the demon core. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want like, to see a I, special little metal ball? <laughs> he's like, hey, hey, guys, check this out. Clink. <laughs> That's a fun little thing. The fucking demon core and the elephant's foot both should still exist in 40k. Mm. Those, I'm going to make a homebrew and the elephant's foot is going to be my chapter's relic. <laughs> I want it. We have, we have, like, does radiation work on the warp? No, there's, only one, there's only one way to find out. <laughs> Jim, exactly. turn off the killer field. Get the demon core. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Stay near the elephant's food in open protection, I promise. Get this. Radiation, right? Radiation is energy. It's pure energy. Gamma radiation fucking sucks, right? Mm-hmm. And it penetrates fucking everything it hits. There's no stopping gamma radiation. And the warp, in of itself, is literally just energy. They are themselves made out of mm-hmm. radiation. However, when two particles collide, if they're sufficiently powered, it makes nuclear fission. So what right. you're saying is we could take the elephant's foot and just yeet it into the warp. <laughs> and cause a, a series of chain nuclear re- explosions. We just drop a <laughs> the, 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 the elephant foot at the, the base of Korn's uh, sc- uh, throne. I, 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 can completely see, I can completely see Zeech using the demon core to prank Korn. <laughs> Watch this, it'll be funny. Oh, oh th- now that's an episode for Casual Chaos right there. <laughs> <laughs> like, what happens if, like, the, like Angron or fucking Magnus or Fulgrim or whatever enters, like, is assaulting a planet and one of them lobs a nuke through the portal they're using? <laughs> it's like, um... <sighs> why didn't the Grey Knights just have nuclear bombs? You just take it. Well, enough. we do. There, there is a scene in uh, at Cult that there is a nuke that is about to go off in one of the caves underneath Cult, like where the war bearers and the ultramarines and like civilians are trying to survive and fight each other. And there is a moment in which a chaos dreadnought gets yeeted into the warp with a nuke strapped to it, <laughs> and we see the portal <laughs> close, but we know the nuke goes off. Uh. So maybe. You know, that's, we could try. Funny, you, just, you just imagine that, like the, the chaos, the chaos gods still haven't like got to like top speed yet, right? And the Horus Heresy is just <laughs> kicking off with the Battle of Kalth, and Horn's just there, and he's like, he's barely out of bed. He's still got his slippers on. He's not even finished making his coffee yet, and this portal just opens several inches away from his face, and a dreadnought just gets fl- flung through it with a nuclear bomb. Just, just goes off in his kitchen. <laughs> I'd be fucking pissed. Yeah, <laughs> I get it now. 
Uh, fucking vaporizes everything. What the fuck? <laughs> just ends up blaming Zinch for it. Doesn't even blame the Empress. It's like, Zinch, what the fuck have you done? <laughs> God damn it, Zinch! I just woke up! <laughs> why, why can't we just shoot black holes into the warp? Oh, now we're talking. We could try. We could try. Like, like there's technology to shoot black holes into the warp. <laughs> <sighs> I mean... <laughs> I mean, we, we, see here, we should just get those fucking Dark Age of Technology uh, fucking mega worms or whatever the fuck they were that bit through reality and bit holes in the warp so that just nothing existed. Well, right, they, they, they get this black, uh, dark, black holes, dark holes, fucking <laughs> dark holes. Black holes, <laughs> <laughs> black holes yes. right? They're, they, they're a super massive gravitational like well mm -hmm. that they pull literally everything including light into them mm. which means that they are powerful that the pa the fucking pull of the gravity is so powerful it pulls in energy mm. just throw that at the eye of terror mm. there you can't you can't get through the fucking eye of terror if we bottleneck it to the size of a dime <laughs> there the problem with that though is you can't really once you've launched the black hole yes the eye of terror gets fucking ejectocetoed then shortly after, the rest of the galaxy goes with it. I, there's black holes everywhere. <laughs> Fuck it, you know. I, 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 feel, <laughs> I feel I feel like this should be an entirely uh, like an uh, entire topic of its own for an episode. Just how to deal <laughs> yes. with the chaos problem. <laughs> <laughs> Those are a variety Fuck of it, dumb I, ideas. <laughs> so the auto, the auto, is it the auto cicatrix or is it the or is it called the mm -hmm. auto maledictum? One or the other, but it's the it's the order that deals with the Cicatrix Maledictum, right? We just role yeah. play as mm -hmm. them for an episode. We'll, Hell pro we'll yeah. probably get a lot I'm more done. done than them because they've done fuck all since <laughs> Cadia got nuked. <laughs> <laughs> well, they have. They've done fuck all. They've got this whole <laughs> order of the Inquisition that's dedicated to closing this fucking Goliath butt crack across the galaxy. And what have they done? <laughs> Not a damn it's thing. They've worse. told us they exist, yeah, right? That's all they've done. It, it's just gotten worse. Yeah, it's just gotten worse. They're just cashing in that government paycheck. Uh, they're just, that's all they're doing. They're embezzling money from the yeah, Imperium. That's all they're doing. <laughs> oh, Jesus. It seems that these Necron pylons can limit warp juice. Yeah, well, I can do the same thing with 13 monkeys and <laughs> jumper cables. It's pay for their Demon Core collection. <laughs> I can just see it. I can see an Inquisitor just sat on a chair with his feet up on his desk. Uh, he's, he's part of this ordo, and like one of his subordinates comes in. It's like, what are we doing today, sir? Nothing we can do. <laughs> it's what the fuck you want me to do about it? Have you seen that thing? Yeah. It's spooky yeah. as hell. It's a, it's a split across the galaxy, kid. What, what the fuck do you want to do? What do you expect us to do? F fucking the, the previous... Uh... A high uh, fucking I don't know it's called High Inquisitor or whatever Lord Inquisitor of the uh, Order got fired aka executed and uh, the the next guy just went like yup I um we're just leaving this here <laughs> pre 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 pretend to uh, write some papers I don't know <laughs> I'm gonna go to my pleasure room see you guys later <laughs> have fun <Yeah. laughs> I'll tell you, we, we, L the Gil like Lord Imp Commander Gilliman, I've come back with a report on the Cisadric Maledictum. <coughs> what of it? It's still fucking <laughs> there. <laughs> <sighs> That's good. But on top of that, like, I don't give a fuck like how much of a how much you know about the lore and how powerful the fucking chaos is supposed to be. Nothing's beating a fucking black hole. All right. <laughs> There's a giant black hole in the center of our universe right now. Lord Gilliman, Lord Gilliman, I know how to deal with the Cicatrix Maledictum. I need a black hole. <laughs> yes, sir. It may destroy the rest of the galaxy as well. But you've asked me to get rid of the Maledictum. I will get rid of it. <laughs> Just sacrifice the rest of the galaxy with it. Fuck it, let's go. <clears throat> Happens like, all right, now we need to make an order to take care of the black ah, hole. The Ordo Black Holus. <laughs> <laughs> or no black hole as <laughs> well. Uh, or would that be, be Ordo Glory Holius? <laughs> uh, or the Ordo Glorious Holius? It'll be a hole with a boy glorious. Oper Operation Glory Hole. <laughs> <laughs> there's, 
<laughs> this episode got so derailed. There are so <gasps> many fucking waste of time ordos of the Inquisition, right? There's a fucking yeah. right. There is an ordo right called the Ordo Necros, and no one knows mm-hmm. what the Ordo Necros does. And there's an ordo oh. called the Ordo Vigilus, and their entire role is just to oversee the Ordo Necros doing fuck all. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is literally a tax scam. These guys are literally. This is just a tax scam. Tax that's all. This, that's it's all these two autos are doing. Scam. That's all they're doing. <laughs> I have a feeling one of the lost Primarchs was a part of it. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. oh, oh there idea. we go. Okay, excellent. We we got back to the original topic. It's one of the, the one of the lost Primarchs was killed just because he was a venture capitalist. That's all. That's all he did wrong. <laughs> he, he, the other he one ran. got killed because yeah. he was a tax evader. <laughs> You ran a fucking Ponzi scheme. It's like we put the entire Great Crusade's wealth into a fucking Bitcoin. It's like Logar. Logar got fucking got fucking railed at for turning monarchy into a religious shit heap, and the eleventh oh. got fucking killed because he turned his entire homeworld into a pyramid scheme. <laughs> so, number eleven. What are you doing, father? It's called crypto. <laughs> I've I've invested the entire fucking imperial, <laughs> the entire treasury imperial into purchase. this. I swear, it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna go, it's to, going the going to the moon. <laughs> Soon oh. enough, the physical currency will be a thing of the past. <laughs> <laughs> I can I don't, I don't know why though like oh, fuck you're gonna be a thing of the past <laughs> Come here. See, I can just see like this this super naive fucking Primark going to the emperor father would you oh. like to buy several packets of Primark coffee and it's like how did you get a hold of this <laughs> ah well you see and he just goes into the whole pyramid scheme fucking like <laughs> spiel and like the emperor's like halfway through it and he's like yep this one's going. This one's gonna die. <laughs> this one. He's just rocking back and forth. Yeah, I'm yeah, gonna kill is... this one. This one's too stupid. <laughs> fucking his Primark power was a running fucking pyramid scheme. That's terrible. <laughs> he's just, he's the just emperor had to kill him because, like, one of his sons was in danger of overthrowing him via economics. Oh, <laughs> oh I, I bet. I bet he was about to like. I, he, he was actively fooling Lehman into uh, fucking up the second Primark, and that, that's why no, he got Lehman, no, he, no, he got he got no he got Lehman into <laughs> Dogecoin. <laughs> he <laughs> tricked. Fuck, <laughs> fuck you, Red, fuck you. That's so dumb. That's so dumb. Fuck you. God look, damn it. look, brother, look, brother Lehman. Fuck. It has it's a little dog, right? You like dogs? <laughs> he tricked he tricked Lehman into selling fucking Herbalife. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Such a fucking moron. The one of the fucking lost primers was, was Gwyneth Paltrow. <laughs> oh, the Goop no. Legion. The, the Poop Legion. <gasps> they made candles. So you don't know what you don't want to know what it smelled like. <laughs> <laughs> fucking warp. Oh god. <laughs> Fuck hell. Here, Lehman, this one smells like my ball sacks. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Do you reckon maybe, like, <gasps> one of the lost Primark could have been fucking killed because they discovered something, right? Mm-hmm. So, like, they discovered, like, the Emperor had, like, just a collection of. F- a Funko Pop. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was gonna say, like, they just discovered the Emperor and Malkador, like, just in a BDSM dungeon. Oh. Or something like that. Oh, and it's like, right, you have to die, you have to be removed from existence, no one can find out. I think oh, a what, Funko Pop collection is worse. Fucking. <laughs> what, what are these, uh, Father? Oh, Funko Pops? Just looks at the door, the Emperor's holding a gun with tears in his eyes. <laughs> No one can know of my sins. The, the emperor has all fifteen thousand six hundred and fifty-four Funko Pops. God damn! <laughs> he has to he has to fend off trays and he has some exclusives. <laughs> That's why he got mad at his son for <laughs> selling the treasury. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> He's like, hey, father, look at this guy. He's made out of metal. He wanted to see your Funko Pop collection. I don't know what a Funko Pop is, but he asked to see some. He just left just now. He's like, oh, my limited edition Hatsui Miku. Only available at GameStop. No! Oh. Oh, 
So, okay, so con- confirmed. Fucking Trazin <laughs> got his, uh, the Emperor's Funko Pops, one of the Primarchs, and the Emperor fucking shot the other one because the fucking he brought him into his fucking collection room. <laughs> yes, yes, this is this is canon. This it's is in canon. the lore. Look it up. Oh, we, we figured it out. The, this is we, the we, truth. We deciphered it. Fucking... The, 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 the second one, they, they just choked on, uh, I don't know, a really dry cracker. <laughs> <laughs> just really sad that. Oh. <laughs> but that's why they, that's why they, that's why they they were erased because the emperor had to erase the eleventh because he couldn't let his Funko Pop collection get out to the gra- Imperium Greater, and he didn't want the fucking second to be remembered for such an embarrassing death. <laughs> yeah, fixed, exactly. guys. And then he was like, "No, no, no! They got absolved of their crimes. Exactly. That, that's what happened." <laughs> yeah, they, they, they I promise you, wrong, I'm, right? I'm, I'm, I'm got them. I, I promise you. <laughs> It was nothing to do with Funko Pops. We didn't even say anything about a Funko Pop. Shut up! Can you imagine Malkador choking Horus out because he wants to avoid a conversation oh, about limited my. edition Funko Pops? <laughs> <laughs> oh my. We do not speak about those in these rooms. <laughs> Horus, I swear to John, I don't. Stop. I don't want to have this conversation again. Uh, the, 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 the same fucking mind wipe thing he did where the Primarchs can't re- talk, really talk about uh, their brothers, uh, he did with Funko Pops as well. See, and, and I, I can prove it to you because there's no canon mention of the Primarchs talking about Funko Pops. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah that, that's how deductive reasoning works. And they're for and they're plastic, so they'd still be around. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> There's no canon like fact of the Primarchs talking about Funko Pops. <laughs> thusly, it's true. <laughs> I love these mental gymnastics. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, like, like, if anyone comes into the server with a with a Primark homebrew, if their story doesn't end in one of those two ways, it's it's never getting shown on the podcast. No, I'm sorry, it's, it's, not canon. it's no longer canon. No. It's not. It's not. It's it's not. It's breaking the lore. All right, you know, go to the wiki, look it up. <laughs> right, gentlemen, can we start to draw this episode to a close, please? Sure, yes, we, sir. We, we just started. We just got started. What are you talking about? Uh, can you give me an idea of how many more minutes you want to talk about the Primarchs and Funko Pops? Oh, I don't know how many minutes are there in a day. <laughs> Considering you've just woken up, I feel like this might last a while. No, oh, man. God. Fucking Funko Pops, that's, that's, that's some important <laughs> shit, right? What, what's the Funko Pop economy doing in the Imperium? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I mean, we got 15,654 of the fucking Funko Pops to talk about, so... <laughs> With a million more God. units on the way. Are we going to go through them via chronicle, chronological release or alphabetical? <laughs> oh, God. I, I, well, I, 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 th- I think I'd rather meet the fate of the lost Primarchs, honestly. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> fuck me. Yeah, the, the, honestly, honestly, the Emperor could have probably started talking about it because he thought his son was genuinely interested, right? <laughs> and then, like, halfway through the conversation, the fucking Eleventh puts a gun to his own head. What's <laughs> 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 out. <laughs> I think here it also lies the power of the Lost Legions as a whole, mm-hmm. because no matter when you talk about them, it always deranges into random talks about everything 40k related and just your many theories, which means GW did a very good job with keeping it as vague as possible, but giving oh, you yeah. just enough details to get a conversation started. For sure. For sure. Yeah, but we cracked the code. Yeah, exactly. Unfortunately for them, we, we <laughs> fucking, fucking figured it out. <laughs> Gra- Graham McNeil, we figured it the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't about the second 11th, it was about the Funko Pops we made along the way. <laughs> perhaps the Funko Pop, perhaps the, pri- the, the missing Primarchs were the Funko Pops we made along the way. <laughs> of course. <laughs> right, let's close this up, please, gentlemen. <gasps> fucking Tom, come here. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do something to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Alex, get back to your fucking no, room. No. <laughs> uh, I'm going back to my cell. <laughs> Alex, Alex is going back to his cell. <laughs> and Tom's going to the milking machine. Let's go. Have so many stocks. Hello. It's me again. Thank you very, very much for watching. If you hang around for just a moment till after this little bit is done, we are going to quickly answer some patron questions. 
I promise you next week you will get to see one of the other gents in front of this fireplace. I just wanted to thank you all for getting to the end of this wonderful episode featuring the gaming storyteller. If you're enjoying our content, please consider liking and subscribing. And if you want to see more of us, please consider jumping in our Discord where myself and the rest of the team are all very active. The link is down below. And if you really want to support us further, please consider just taking a real quick look at our patron. And you may have the chance to join these wonderful, fine individuals on the wall behind me. Thank you very much. We'll see you next time. Right, gentlemen. <laughs> so, uh, um, Loyalist oh. Thousand, our patron, Loyalist Thousand Sons, asks, What army would you like to run if you could have every miniature you needed slash desired? Moots, would you like to answer first? <sighs> Sure thing. <clears throat> now, I think what I would really like is actually a full Votan army. Uh, I, I just really like those little ma gnome mans. With some more models that haven't come out yet, potentially. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there are still some models that I don't own even. So, I, I just love to expand my little army. What about you, Red? I would love to run full size Titan Legio. Ooh. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Just to bring the whole. How many points is a whole Titan Legio? I don't know. Depends, but like, I want they at said least at the height of the two warlords, four <laughs> reavers, <laughs> six warhounds. At the warhounds. height of the heresy, Legio Mortis had over a hundred Titans. Yeah, oh, yeah that one. Hell, oh, yeah. I want to run Legio Mortis. <laughs> What about you, Alex? What would be, uh, if you could have every miniature you needed slash desired, what army would you run? Um, so, if these models just randomly started existing, it would be a lair army. I fucking mm. love the description mm. of the lair. lair. Oh. Mm. I, I just love everything about it. I've always been a fan of, like, Slaneshi sculpts as a whole. Like, they usually just look very good. And lair, snake, demon things, oh, it, the, their description always really caught my attention. So I'd love an army of those, but if it's about a more existing army, um, I still someday want to do a Sam Han um, Eldar army, just jetpacks everywhere. Nice. I like those. I those like are that. Cool. Unexpected answer. Hmm. That's bloody good. I think for me, um, it, it's it's quite interesting for me because I'm actually kind of working towards it. I know it's super basic. But Aaron and I have plans in the not very near future, but we do have plans to have a 7k versus 7k weekend spanning game of Holy shit. Space Marines versus Tyranids. Mm. Um, and honestly, if I think of like like my ideal thing, it would just to inst like click my fingers and instantly be ready to have that game. <laughs> you know? That would be just that would be the dream. I'd love that so much. Right, our other uh, our next patron question for this episode. <gasps> Oh, pardon me. Is from Rion. And Rion asks, What is your favorite model in each of your collections and why? Moots? Well, hard to pick one, honestly. Well, before you yes. answer, before you answer, it, the same goes for, for you two as well. If you do have an answer and you have a picture of that model, put it in our little references thing and I'll put it on the screen. As of you course, say. of course. Uh, now I have two favorite because I can't choose one and that is the painted uh, Lord of Executions uh, that was made by uh, Emmanuel of the Lions fucking lovely little mini it looks so fucking chunky I'm gonna put the picture up uh, and the uh, oh it's for my uh, forgot to mention it's for my custom chaos warband and the uh, second one is my chapter master for my uh, homebrew space marine chapter the iron gorgers uh, which is uh, this little fella right here and uh, yes his axe is fucking enormous and i love him excellent excellent i love both of these models red uh i have two models that i like both That's equally good. That's good. I've realized I have two as well. <laughs> <Go on. laughs> uh, first off, uh, I have uh, the Primarch Horse Lupercal that Wolfram painted for oh, me. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm getting the picture of that right now. Give me but a moment. Uh, so, is this one? I, I, I'll, I'll cut it down later. Um, yeah, this one. And then my second one is Cardus Cadmark. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. 
Oh, I keep I keep forgetting that you've got Kadvar now. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Do, so for the audience's um, uh, FYI, Karnas Kadvar was a model I made for my one of my first homebrews. It was a spectacular model that I took a lot of time making um, and planning and sort of executing and Red has always, always loved that model. And the last time Red came to visit um, in November of the year just gone it was kind of like, it, it, we were at the situation where, where Cadfar had been stuck in a box and hidden away for over a year at that point and that particular homebrew I'd, I'd really lost a lot of my love for. It was still a great model. And I, and I realized in the moment that that model would get a lot more love if Red had it. So I was like, fuck it, just take it. And so now Red, uh, so now Red, Red owns Karnas Kadva. And he's sitting oh, yeah. in a display case with all my other storm engines and, and display models. He's right next to Horus, actually. <laughs> 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 if you look, they're in the same fucking pose, too. It works. It works. And what about you, Alex? What's, what is your favorite uh, model or two um, in your collection? I went for just one that I also have never entered into a competition just to also keep my true identity hidden because then my name is around on websites and I'd like to keep it that way. Um, okay. This is my Tanatar that was sculpted for me by... Uh, my best friend that lives in the UK. He is a great guy that I've been doing the hobby with together for about 15 years. Mm, yeah. um, we've like learned the hobby together. He taught me how to paint. Uh, I taught him how to like sculpt some 3D stuff years later. And um, for my birthday, he sculpted me an entire Dark Mechanicum army. Ooh. And in that was this talenter. And when I painted it up, that's like that like signifies for me like the longest part of my hobby. I've always loved the Dark Mechanicum when I first read about him in third edition about evil Mechanicus guys. <laughs> it always caught my attention. So I have always wanted an army for them and the talents are really just represents that model for me. Oh like, my God, this reminds me of Feranox. I forgot I had it. It looks fucking great. <clears throat> oh, it's splendid. Okay. It's Thank actually you. awesome. I, I know, I know a snack you will really like this one. Oh yeah. <laughs> And finally, mine, I've uh, I've kind of got three, so I'm just going to go through them fast. The first one, the obvious one, is my current chapter master for my homebrew, the Midas Saints. Put him on the screen now. He's just a really big Gravis fella. I made him oh. even bigger by extending his legs and using Inceptor body pieces, because they're even bigger than normal Gravis body pieces. Big fucking lad. Mm -hmm. uh, I got shoulders from Mastercrafted, so his shoulders are even more massive than Gravis shoulders. And yeah, just a great dude. Uh, the second one, uh, again, quickly, is um, the Demon Prince I made uh, for myself. I've made a ton of Demon Princes for a bunch of people over the years, but this one I actually made for me. It's a combination of Vashdor and the um, recently, in the last year or two, renewed Chaos Demon Prince model. Mm. As soon oh. as I saw Vashdor revealed, I knew I had to do this straight away. Uh, and the final one, and it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a, um, uh, a bit of a left field entry. I don't know if any of you guys would have seen it, and I don't actually have any pictures of it, so I will have to take some and retroactively add them into the thing. But it's, I'll put it on the, I'll put it behind us now. I mean, uh, it's a. Um, uh, Terminator Ancient. Mm. The, ter oh. the Terminator Ancient that I made recently using the new uh, Leviathan Terminator Captain. Oh, I just love it. That's cool. That's a cool idea. Anyways, gentlemen, uh, thank you so much for joining us, Alex. It has been an absolute pleasure to have you on once again. I suspect shortly after this goes live, the video that you and I collabed on will ditch. also go live, or you'll be found dead in a ditch. Yes, yeah, either or, um, <laughs> or both, or, or both. both. Who knows? Or Who knows? Both. <laughs> so once again, thank you everyone for watching. If you enjoyed watching the video, please smash that subscribe button. Please take a look at our Discord, and if you want to support us, please just consider having a quick look at the Patreon. Can I go back to my cell now? <laughs> yeah, you can go back to your fucking cell now. Go. Can I have fucking milk? Shit. I was promised milk. Yes, no, yes, you will get milk. No, you get your I need to go. Milk. 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 milk is only for good inmates. <laughs> <laughs> you get Tom milk tonight. <laughs> <laughs>